Hey guys, I do say welcome back to another Gear 6 video today. We're going to be discussing the COG's new super weapon and their new plan to destroy the swarm and locusts in Gear 6. The humans of Sarah are no strangers to war. After all, they've been fighting for as long as they can remember. War is all they know. In the past, they fought for emulsion, for country, for freedom, for survival. They fought for humanity. After years of endless fighting and war, humanity had finally found peace for 25 years, where civilization was able to prosper and flourish in a world of safety and family, a world finally at peace, until however, right now, as a new enemy, black-hearted and corrupt at its core, has once again re-emerged. Super weapons were humanity's specialty for human survival in every worldwide conflict in the last century, as with each weapon brought both good and bad, the balance between its peace and destruction was always a fine line that could be easily tipped in any moment. The Hammer of Dawn is an emulsion energized orbital satellite based laser that fired from above bringing total destruction in a devastating strike and allowed the COG to wipe out any target in one hot fiery wave. The Hammer of Dawn was originally used to end the Pendulum Wars by forcing the UIR to surrender as well as also throughout the Locust War itself from Emergence Day, the Hammer of Dawn strikes, the sinking of Jacinto and the Hollows, to most recently the defense of both Settlement 2 and New Ephira during the invasion of the Swarm enemy. Despite the heavy damage suffered in the Pendulum Wars and the Locust War by years and years of fighting, it was in fact due to the Hammer of Dawn counterattack, which was a global orbital strike against the Locust Horde beyond the safety of the Jacinto Plateau that was responsible for much of the destruction to the planet's environment by employing Sarah's entire arsenal of orbital hammer beam weapons to scorch all locust infested areas, leaving 90% of Sarah's surface as a barren wasteland with all major human cities left in total ruin. A firestorm so great that an cloud covered the surface calling the global climate to killing millions of both locusts and humans. The light mass missile is a weapon of mass destruction developed earlier than the Hammer of Dawn during the Pendulum Wars that draws power from refined emulsion becoming highly explosive. Accompanied by smaller rockets for maximum efficiency, it was considered one of the COG's deadliest weapons ever created, releasing an incredible amount of heat upon impact. The light mass missile was used several times in desperate situations, including stopping a UIR mutiny uprising in Basgar as the rebels battled for gaining access to the UIR's very own Hammer of Dawn satellites as well as also during the beginning of the Locust War as well, preventing General Khan and his Locust forces in Halvo Bay from killing everybody in the surrounding area. The light mass bomb, similar to the light mass missile, is a torpedo-based design variant that was used during the light mass offensive, where Marcus Phoenix was able to successfully launch the light mass bomb on board the Tyro Pillar train, destroying the Outer Hollow, a significant population of the Locust Horde, as well as also the Krill breeding grounds, leading to the species extinction. The emulsion countermeasure machine is a target radiation weapon that was designed to destroy all emulsion infected living cells on Sarah, killing off all of the lambent creatures and ultimately the lambency parasite itself which had been the sole cause of every major historic moment in the Gears of War universe ever so far. After Adam Phoenix was able to successfully activate the emulsion countermeasure weapon, it sent out a blue pulsing wave of radiation that engulfed the entire planet of Sarah, breaking down every single infected cell, killing the lambent enemy, and what the creator assumed also the Locust Horde. The emulsion countermeasure machine, however, instead had several drastic knock-on effects which included causing the collapsed Locust corpses to begin forming, an indestructible crystal shell around their bodies, extreme weather effects such as the wind flares, which were massive violently rotating vortexes of air, producing high dangerous speeds of wind and large amounts of striking electricity to possibly even the origins of the swarm and the original first ever main swarm hive in the biggest threat to humanity ever. During the invasion of the swarm outbreak when the locusts re-emerged from their crystal shells to form the new swarm enemy, they began at turning a locust burial sites and new locations into swarm hives and kidnapping humans to be processed into swarm soldiers while they lacked both a leading queen and the awakening of the other locust horde creatures still crystallized in their shell slumber. Once the COG had discovered the swarm threat and the new enemy arising from locust burial sites becoming active, Colonel Victor Hoffman attempted to persuade First Minister Jin into striking in the heart of this swarm territory by going after the swarm hives themselves. Similar to one of his previous most famous missions in Operation Hollistorm from the Locust War by sending COG gears directly into the inner hollow to take the fight to the enemy. However, Jin had disagreed due to the very likely high level of human casualties and insisted on using the DBs instead, forcing Hoffman into early retirement from the COG's military and relocating to Bernie Mataki's family estate to work on his very own secret operation. 
After Kate Diaz and Del Walker's visit to the abandoned New Hope Research Facility on the homeland, Hoffman was able to get his hands on the sample of the deadly gas that the Nile Samson AI had used to cleanse the entire facility and believed that with the help of Dr. Hannah Cole, the gas could also be used to destroy entire enemy swarm hives in the same exact way. With the help of a few contacts he still had in the higher-ups of the new COG, Hoffman began planning out his high buses initiative, which would see specialist gears deployed by letting themselves be captured by the swarm and taken directly into the heart of a swarm hive. Then they would fight their way out as essentially elite swarm killers. Corporal Jeremiah Keegan, Lieutenant Lani Kalisa and outsider Leslie Mack were selected for the first Hive bus which took place inside a secret cog bunker named Sanctum that was used as a locust burial site which of course with the re-emergence of the swarm had turned into a full-blown swarm hive located on the south island of Bahanu which Hoffman needed the squad to infiltrate and plant a chemical bomb at its heart to kill them from the inside out. Team Scorpio somewhat were able to detonate the chemical gas bomb inside the Bahanu Swarm Hive, barely escaping with their very own lives. And while they saw the toxic gas working on the smaller swarm creatures, it had no ill effect on the larger, heavier swarms such as the Snatchers and the Warden Scions to the overall Swarm Hive in general. Returning to Galangi Island reporting their uncovered new data to Hoffman and Hannah, Mac jokingly suggested needing something a lot stronger, like possibly the nightmare acid that Team Scorpio had witnessed as the creature was taking down the swarm single-handedly on the beaches of Bahanu with a deadly acidic venom that seemed to destroy all organic matter, causing it to dissolve into a goo-like substance, learning that it was coming from a legendary bird-like creature that was native to the island called the Wakatu. Discovering that the swarm had infiltrated and converted Lani Khalees Kaliso's family on Walehi into more swarm foot soldiers, Team Scorpio undertook a mission to the Wakatu's nest where they were able to safely retrieve a sample of the Wakatu's powerful venom and allow the majestic creature to live and everyone survive. After returning to Hoffman and handing it over to Hannah, she was able to combine the Wakatu's venom and the toxic gas from New Hope to create a new much more effective deadly chemical compound codename VNM5PO which Team Scorpio were then able to deliver to the heart of the swarm infested bunker by purposely getting captured by swarm snatchers and freeing themselves from their pods using adrenaline injectors, this time around though planting the poisonous bomb and successfully destroying the Bahanu Island swarm hive and all of these swarming creatures lurking inside. During the aftermath of Team Scorpio's second high bust in Max's home village of Bravel, which also proved to be highly successful, Hannah, with the help of Team Scorpio overseen by Hoffman, seemed to have successfully created the COG's new super weapon and a new successful plan. By using the venomous acidic toxic gas bomb and combating the swarm enemy, by eliminating the swarm highs directly from within using high busters, that First Minister Jin and the rest of the COG will want to use them in Gear 6 when hunting down the main swarm hive to save the fate of humanity and the rest of the planet, opting in for a massive Operation Infiltrate using actual COG gear squads in what will be a war officially returning to Sarah as a planet-wide conflict between all races fight for the survival of their species. Please make sure to leave me a comment down below telling me what you think. What is your guys opinion on the COG's new super weapon and the new plan to destroy the swarm in gear 6 using the venomous bomb to destroy the main swarm hive? Make sure to check out my other gear 6 videos already live on the channel if you do enjoy this type of content and definitely expect even more gear 6 videos on the way to the channel soon. So there you have it guys, full details on the COG's new super weapon and the new plan to destroy the swarm and locust in gear 6. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it, subscribe for me, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I shall see you in the next one.